In this video, I'm gonna talk about some of the pros and cons about using the Insta360 Studio on a desktop for editing. So this has been a really interesting year for me. Um, I've only just started using Insta360's editing studio and in some respects, I'm fairly blown away because it is super simple to get hold of and the actual results you can get out of it in terms of the quality of your video are substantial compared to other platforms. And I'm gonna go into that in this video. There are, however, pros and cons to using the software. So I want to jump into six parts of the software and I'm gonna walk through it, tell you what I like about it and what I don't like so much. So I just wanna give you the best of it experience possible. So this is all from my point of view. Let's just jump straight in. So the first point on my list is user interface. So this is the interface you see when you open up the studio. And as you'll see, it's super simple. And it's a lot like a lot of the interfaces we see on all the other software. So we've got the um, viewfinder here, showing our video. We've got a timeline at the bottom. On the left here, we have like our files. And on the right here, we have somewhat of an editing tab of like different features and stuff. It's really simple to use. Some people may even say it's overly simple. So if you're more of an advanced video editor come into this, you may look at it and overlook how simple it is and think, oh, because it's simple, it won't be able to get me the results that I want. But as you'll see, and as you've probably seen on some of my other videos on the channel, it, that's not at all, that's not, uh, that's not correct at all. So user interface is a thumbs up from me. I really like the user interface. It's simple, especially if you're a beginner with your new Insta360 camera. So I like that. The next thing is we'll talk about performance. So performance again, I, this is like how the software performs as you are editing it. So I think it's generally pretty good. And I've used a number of different editing studio apps so I've used Premiere Pro, I've used Final Cut Pro, I've tried GoPro's Player. And to be honest with you, Insta360 from a performance standpoint is the best. And I've, I'm, what I mean by this is when you edit 360 footage in Premiere Pro, it takes me a lot longer because you can get a lot more advanced with things, which obviously then the actual software itself uses a lot more of the computer's power. So it takes me longer to edit because the computer is running slower. Whereas I don't get that on this. Because it's so simple, it just must use so much less of the computer's power to edit the 360 video, which I really, really do like. And I guess that's because it's a native Insta360 file in the Insta360 Studio, whereas using an Insta360 file in Premiere Pro may not be native and it may cause some weird issues. So performance standpoint, I like that. Third point is features. So the features in Insta360 Studio are somewhat limited. So, I like to think of this as a 360 reframing platform. So I don't come into here thinking, right, I'm gonna edit a complete video of my travels or my adventures or whatever. All I use this studio for is to reframe my 360 footage and then I export it and then I edit it. I edit my story together on another platform like Final Cut Pro or DaVinci or Premiere Pro, something like that. A lot of people have been asking, you know, can you edit videos in the software? Unfortunately, you can't, you can't add music to it, but it's not an editing platform as such. It is a 360 reframing platform. So you've got to remember that. So with that being said, the features are somewhat limited because you can't do all these cool things that you can do in a full editing studio, but we've still got some things we can edit. We've got um, trim buttons. We've got keyframing, obviously, which is fairly advanced as you may have seen some other videos. We've got deep track, so we can actually draw a square around an object and we can start tracking that as the video is playing, which is a really cool feature. It's a really powerful bit of uh, AI technology. And it really does take a lot of the hard work out of making really cool videos fast. I'll just show you, I'll play that bit now. I, I'm, look at this, he's following the guy. And I haven't done anything to do to make that happen. We've also got time shift, so we can speed up and slow down our clips. We've got different aspect ratios, uh, direction lock, which I covered in another video, which is really, really handy, especially for GoPro, sorry, especially for action camera footage like this. We've got different stitching options. We've got a little bit of image processing, so we can add a little bit of customization to our um, color and clarity, but this isn't color grading. So this is basic color grading at best. Like this is not proper color grading. 
if I wanted to colour grade this properly, I would take it into Final Cut Pro or Premiere Pro and really, really go to town on how I really want my videos to look. So from a feature standpoint, it hasn't got all the features you may be expecting, but that's because it's a 360 editing software, not a full on filming studio. So compatibility, let's talk about that because the thing with Insta360 Studio is you can only use Insta360 clips in there. You can't use GoPro clips, you can't use DJI clips in there. It, it just won't let you, from my experience anyway. But all I've ever used and all I do use now is my Insta360 camera, so it's not really a problem. Whereas if you're in Premiere Pro or some of the other platforms, you, could, you can literally import any type of file and work with it. So that may be an advantage, disadvantage, depending on what you want to get out of your footage. Next point is learning curve. So I have a lot of tutorials on this channel about how to use this piece of software. Um, we've gone into how to import videos, how to edit things. We've gone through all the features in the in the studio to get you to grips with it. And I don't think it actually takes too long to get to grips with it compared to other platforms. Say for example, you were using Premiere Pro, that would take you hours and hours and hours to really fine tune what you want to get out of your 360 clips. Whereas I feel with Insta360 Studio, a few of my YouTube tutorials, not being biased, but you can be up and running, creating great content in a matter of 30 minutes to an hour. I don't think it takes that long to learn at all. And again, if you want to do some little bits of editing to your 360 footage, it's not too hard to do with the, with the features we have in here already. So the learning curve compared to other platforms is way, way faster. And that, for me, when you're looking for speed and precision, I think that's really good. Six is export settings. So this is really important because we want our clips to come out in the highest quality possible to share them wherever we're sharing them. So whether you share them on social media, on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, whatever, we want them to be the best possible quality. And I'm still figuring this out myself. But if you look at the export settings here we have, we can export a reframe video, which is usually what I would do. So you would export a reframe video if you were then wanting to ex upload that to social media, or you were gonna further edit that in Final Cut Pro or some other software. Um, export a 360 video. You, this is where you would export a 360 video to edit the 360 clip in another platform. So if you wanted to get a little bit more advanced with Premiere Pro, you would export 360 video and upload into Premiere Pro to use all the 360 tools in there. That is an advanced technique. So yeah, but you can do that. So I usually use reframe video. We can obviously choose our parameters and we can actually create and save presets. So every time you save a, um, a video, or export it. You can choose a preset so it just saves a bit of time, that's useful. The bitrate scale, we've obviously got a sliding bitrate scale from like 1 to 200, which is really good. And you can see the file size here changes as well quite a lot, depending on the size. And we can change the resolution. This is set to 4K at the minute, as you can see. And usually for, uh, for uploaded social, I usually go H.264. It's very basic, again, for 95% of people, this will be fine. <laughs> the people who don't want to overcomplicate things and just want a really fast, simple, and easy solution, this is perfect. If you want to get more advanced, Final Cut Pro, Premiere Pro, DaVinci, those are all other options to consider. So there are pros and cons to using Insta360's Studio. I do overall think the pros outweigh the cons in a big way. And I also think with Insta360's updates that are always happening, it's only gonna continue getting better. Who knows, maybe in the future we will see Insta360 bring out an actual editing platform where you can add music and you can get a little bit more creative with your clips. But for now, just think of this as a reframing studio for your 360 footage. And don't, don't get angry that you can't add music to your clips or anything like that. But any questions on this stuff, or if you've got anything to add to the pros and cons that I've listed here, get them in the comments below. Let's get a conversation going. And if you want to grab my video settings cheat sheet, which will be on the screen somewhere, there'll be a link in the description to that, which is all my favorite settings for my Insta360 camera. It's completely free. Jump down there, go grab it, and I'll see you in the next video.